Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. This is our first interview in Barbados and our very special guest is Adam. I can't believe it's your first. It's the first, baby. Hi, my name is Adam. I'm not from Barbados, but I live here. I am gay and who cares? And pronouns, the only thing I need in my life is Prosecco and you were watching queer. Let's dive in. We should back. First of all, I brought a little gift for us. This thing for Prosecco. <laughs> oh my god, this is uh, first class service on my, my own set. Hey. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Happy uh, Thursday. Happy freaking Thursday. Barbados is a pretty homophobic place and there's a lot of laws against same-sex couples, etc. How was it for you growing up in Barbados? Growing up, it was a bit tough, especially in like government schools. Yeah. But I mainly went to private, and my friends were accepted. They didn't care; they still don't. Yeah. I made from since I was like one. You know, my aunt and uncle knew from since I was like two, three years old. So, if you don't know, I really hate to say it for your life. Yeah. So you grew yeah. up. You grew up visibly queer. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I was the first one dancing to Whitney Houston. <laughs> when did you know that you were gay? How old were you? I must have been like six, seven. How did you know? I mean, I had girls at crush on and I, I would see her and like her, but I didn't like like her. Yeah. Whereas with boys, they you just, it was natural, it, it felt normal. Absolutely. And, you know, still does. <laughs> <laughs> and what age did you finally come out? I didn't come out, I was kind of dragged out. You were dragged out? Yeah, it was a situation where I had two Facebook accounts, my sister tried to add me on one of them, she added the wrong one, she realized that guys were on there, and my sister came and asked me a question. I just wasn't ready to answer her and it was it was the most stressful night I've ever had in my entire life, but at the same time, as soon as everything came out, I was so relieved. I've never actually said it to anybody. Yeah. It's also nobody's business. If you are gay, straight, in between just be happy. Yeah. I, I don't have time to judge people because I know it's like to judge there. I don't have time for that. I have time to drink Prosecco. <laughs> Amen. Ch cheers to that, babe. Cheers. I don't have time for people. But I, I love that perspective and I think it's important for us to understand, you know, like you don't, no one needs to come out. You either know or you don't. And if you ask the question, we'll have that conversation. I'm, I don't owe you anything. I don't owe I you. I don't feel the need to sit on there and give you a life story unless I know you're a genuine person. If you are genuine, then I will have a conversation with you. But if not, and I know you're coming from a malicious place, yeah. it's not going to happen. Absolutely. You said you were dragged out in coming out to your parents. What was that experience like? My mom asked me about it and I think that was one of the few nights, because as I told you before, I don't cry often. I think in my lifetime, I probably cried about seven, eight times. Oh my gosh, girl, I cried like seven times a week. And that was one of them, because it's it's a situation that I didn't want to talk to anybody about, because it's nobody's business. Yeah. And I don't think it was handled properly. Yeah. At that time, I also wasn't understanding where my parents were coming from. They just wanted to, at the end of the day, think to know that I was either choosing or making the right choice. And I see it now, but I was also choosing friends over family because my friends understood and accepted a lot more. Yeah. Did you feel you didn't have that acceptance from your parents? Yes, for a while. And there was a lot of family drama. And what was some of the dialogue or conversations that happened between you and say your mom? Well, it was just a case she thought, she thought it was a phase. She thought it was something she did, she said, and it really truly really wasn't that. It was a situation where it's like, I don't want to have this conversation with you, so I'll say yes or no to what you want to hear. And her and I are so much alike, so I knew exactly what to say to diffuse the situation. After you came out, how, did you have any big discussions or conversations with her in regards to, like, this is your reality, and um, you either accept it or you don't? No, because I don't want to. I know she doesn't want to. You don't You don't want to have those conversations with your mom? No, I don't. It's just I know where it would lead to, and it would lead to two of us having a massive argument on talking for months on time. And I just don't want to do anything to upset anybody right now. 
we're all quite happy with everything and um, I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> I'm curious, um, do you find it hard that you don't have that acceptance from your mom? I think that she has come to an understanding that nothing can be said or done to change it. Yeah. Without having a full conversation, I think we've kind of all agreed just to leave it and let it be. There, there are many conversations I'd love to have with her, but I know I can never have those conversations with her just because I know I don't, I'll never have one. What are some of the conversations you want to have with your mom? Um, you know, you know, uh, I love my sister, I adore my sister, but I know I can't offer what she has for my mom in terms of getting married and having kids here. And it's super upsetting on a daily basis. And I just, I can't, I can't give them to her for her to be satisfied. I wrote on my Facebook post a while ago that I would love kids, I would spoil them, I would treat them. And I got a message from her and the message wasn't the nicest. I'm sure that if I was to meet somebody, she would be happy, but I don't think I could take them home. Absolutely. I don't think I could have that same, you know, experience that my sister did. So what I'm understanding is that you and your mom don't talk about sexuality. It is yeah. in a family setting. It is a conversation that is not spoken about. I'm very sad for you that you can't even have those conversations because you don't want to piss off your mother. Whereas like, this is your life. This is your reality. This is who you are. And you can't even have those moments to connect. Do you feel like you have to change your mannerisms or change your personality when you go home to spend time with them? Yeah, because I don't wear any of my jewelry. Yeah, I you don't never, wear your jewelry? No. There's certain things I can't do around them. And yeah. it's then, it, it, it makes you question yourself, but then at the same time, why bother? Yeah, absolutely. I, I you know, I, I, th I think you have found a huge, massive space of confidence with your friends. And I'm happy you found that because Community is important. Yeah. And you found your community within your friend group. Yeah. Let's jump into fashion for a sec. Before you mentioned that you have to take off your, your jewelry when you're going to see your mom. And I admire you so much and feel inspired by you because you go against the gender binary a lot. You're quite androgynous with your fashion yeah. and your energy and you don't really care when you go out. You're just like, I'm gonna wear what I wanna wear to feel confident and comfortable, and if this is what I wanna wear, this is what I'm gonna wear, or this is how I'm gonna be, or this is my energy. So, my question to you is, how did you find the confidence to go against the norms of society? Dress the way you wanna dress. Be who you wanna be. I honestly would say about 90% of the time I go out, it's confidence, and there's always that percentage that I'm a little nervous. Yeah. What I wear on the West Coast, I can't wear on the South Coast. Oh. Example, I can oh. wear this to the sea ship or a trail or even a tie, and it's accepted. But when I wear it on the South Coast, the mentality of the people are different. So you would say when you go to the South Coast, you dress a little bit more um, masculine, where you go to the yeah. West Coast, you have a little bit more fluidity with the way you yeah. dress yourself. Have you experienced any discrimination or what no, because I know, you know, people that if something was said, I would defend myself, but I would also be defended by my friends. Absolutely. I've gotten to that point where I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. I've had to build up such a thick skin living here. And if you haven't grown up here to experience it, you have no idea what it's like. Giving a little insight to someone that's never, an LGBTQ person that's never come to Barbados, what are some of the things that people experience here? Dear Lord, let me have a sip. Take a sip, baby. Buckle up. No, kidding. <laughs> a lot of people come here and they're worried. Oh, I heard that it's illegal to be gay. You can't hold hands in public. If you want to feel safe, you want to feel happy, you want to feel comfortable, the West Coast. So when you say the word safe, what are you referring to? They just don't want to be, they don't want to be out in public and do something and be attacked, be verbally abused or harassed or irritated. And is that quite common in Barbados? No, because these areas come up and I'll defend myself. <laughs>
have you heard a lot of stories from friends or stuff that people no. are like being attacked or verbally? I think, I think you know what, and I, I don't I think know. it's a fair that people have in their heads. They have it in their head, but I think we've gotten as a country to a point where we are a lot more understanding of it. Yeah. We're not fully accepted yet, but we've gotten to a point where it's tolerated. Yeah. When it comes to advice uh -huh. that you would give to someone that's coming that is afraid because of how Barbados is viewed in the news, what are some things that you would say to them? I mean, I would honestly say I understand your hesitation and concern, but go places that you see your similar kind. Mm -hmm. Go places that you would think in your head, okay, I might feel comfortable there. Chances are I'll probably be you anyhow and be your friend, so I'll guide you in the right direction. But Adam's just like, go anywhere I'm going, baby. A dating. So Barbados is known for being super uh, homophobic and closeted. Mm -hmm. How is the dating life in Barbados <laughs> for you? I've been on three dates in my entire life. Wow. And I'm still single. Guys here don't want to be seen out in public. They want to come by you or you go by them. Yeah. No. They're like, oh, let's keep it hush hush. No. <laughs> if you want to chat with me or get to know me, let's do it in a public setting. Yeah. I've had a guy who's been friends with Benefit now for 10 years. Wow. Saw him the other day in public. Jenny even entertained me. He was there with his boys. Even the slightest acknowledgement, even if he Just a hello. went, yeah. nodded, replied back, I would tolerate that because I respect people and I respect their spaces, their opinions, their beliefs, whatever, I respect people. But that was just such an insult. And that's majority of what you get in Barbados. In Barbados. Yeah. So is that, is that referred to like a huge down low scene? Oh, there's, I, I, I'm not lying to you, probably eight out of 10 gay guys are down low. Wow. wow. There are very few that are out and proud and in relationships and marriages and beyond that, it's all down low. So the dating life here is very much like undercover, you go to someone's house, you don't want to be seen in public and there's no actual physical dates that heterosexual people get to have. No. I think that's so hard because, you know, in a place where you're already so suppressed for your sexuality by yeah. society, by your family yeah. sometimes, yeah. you have to now experience the exact same thing in the dating world where you can't have a normal relationship because of how society views you and how scared people are to put themselves out there and actually go on a physical date and have those feelings. That's so hard. I like to be more tourists because the tourists are so accustomed wherever they're from Absolutely. of going out and having dates. You've opened my eyes up to my privilege of just being in a bigger city and having those opportunities to actually go on physical dates and not feel scared or judged. I just want to say that it's so sad to hear that that is what is going on here, you know, and I think that's a huge shift in like just understanding the perspective of from a queer person that these are things that they have to go through. They can't be authentic. They can't live their truth. They can't go on dates. They can't express themselves in just as authentically as they want to. And that restriction on a person causes a lot of mental health issues in a sense oh, yeah. of depression or um, anxiety. And I think the world needs to understand that. So coming back to just like, why not um, accept each other? It can happen at any time. I was out on Saturday with 20 of us at Fort St. Charles. We were having a great time. And they left to go pick up a friend of mine. And I really didn't want to go back because everybody was in a couple. I could see that we were all having a great time as a group of friends. Yeah. But as an individual, I had nobody there to share that with. That's hard. It's hard. I'm dying for the day that I can actually come and bring a guy to my friends and be like, this is so and so. This is my man. I let I, I hear you and I I think it's good it's good awareness for a, a lot of people, even your friends, you know, who are going to be watching this interview of just like these are some of the struggles that we deal with. A lot of us don't express ourselves. We 
yeah. don't have those moments too. And we never want, you know, you never want to make anybody feel guilty or bad because yeah. it's not their fault either. How would they know yeah. until they walk in someone else's shoes? So yeah. I think it, everything you've said is just like such great awareness for so many people in Barbados. Just start trying to learn and educate themselves of the struggles that an LGBTQ person has to go through on a daily basis. If I didn't have the mentality and the self-care that I have now, mm -hmm. I would have jumped years ago. Because when you have to deal with an everyday stress or struggle that one or two people may understand, it's it's really difficult. And there were days that I really questioned it. And it's sad that for somebody like me now, had one or two thoughts years ago. Yeah. And I feel sorry for people and I say to them, if you want to have a conversation, if you don't know me, but you're watching this and you want mm -hmm. to reach out to me, you're more than welcome to. As somebody living here who's only here for a few more years, I've gone into realization that I won't find, I'll, I'll, I'll find happiness, but I will never be properly fulfilled living here. Absolutely. I want to jump back a little bit. So I think mental health and the LGBTQ community is a huge conversation topic and you just spoke about struggle people definitely have this image of you you're vibrant you're flamboyant you're energetic your fashion is fabulous and you're always in such a good space when people see you out yeah. you know they have this image of you but you just spoke about the struggle that you yes. deal with what are some of the struggles that you face or you have faced in the past that have made you get to a place where you have thought about, this is it for me? It, it's, it's comments made from people you wouldn't expect that are closest to you. Yeah. Some of the meanest things have come from family. Absolutely. And, and people that you hold so close to your heart. I expect and that because listen, I know my mom my dad and my sisters concern and genuine care for me and what it's like growing up but they don't experience it they don't have to go through they it don't have that empathy, yeah. they don't understand it yeah. so when one of them i already hate to say it in particular two say certain things i just honestly want to give up i get in there as i said it's their loss not mine yeah. and that's it I know that I know who I am yeah I know what I have to offer and if you can't accept me for who I am and not who I used to be that's your loss it's so hard to hear because you like I I totally understand this circumstance of just like you know the people closest to you if they say something to you it impacts you the most yeah and i feel sad for you because i know that you don't have those people to have those conversations with to yeah. help bear the bur bear the burden with you you know and i think i parents, admire the fact i admire you and your family because everybody just gets along and they're so open and understanding yeah sometimes i wish with my head and then sometimes i'm like you know what we're in a good space right now just leave it let it be yeah and for me, that, that hurts me to hear that because if you could have it your own way, you would not be saying that, but you're so accustomed to all these battles and fights yeah. and arguments that it has pushed you into this place of just like, I'm gonna let it slide. I'm not gonna stand up for myself because it's not worth it. I don't wanna do it because they won't even have the conversation. I know, but they won't even have the conversation with me where it's like, that. that's hard to hear because you're not even trying to say anything you're just trying to be yourself but you can't have those opportunities to live authentically because people around you aren't having those open-minded conversations with no. you not even wanting to hear it so no. it, it's for me it sounds like you've come to a place where you're just like i give up i i don't even want to engage because i know the outcome so you're predicting the situation already instead of having really healthy conversations that are going to help you in your life and the people that are watching need to know that this is a lot of like where we need to come from as outsiders. Yeah. We have to be open to having conversations that are civil, 
mm. genuine and gracious to be able to communicate to lessen a lot of the mental health issues that people struggle with in this world, especially LGBTQ people. So yeah, my point, and I hear you, and I think that people need to be very careful with the words that they use. Yeah, you know, and I think that you brought up a huge point. You know, like people closest to you said things that were very um, that hurt you, and those were the moments where you felt like. You were your weakest. Yeah. And I just wish if I could have a conversation with certain people in my family about certain things, but I know I can't. Yeah. And, and, and it's very hard. It's upsetting. And at the end of the day, I've just gotten to the point, you know what? It's their loss, not mine. Absolutely. You know, I'm sure there's a day that will come that they or I may regret it, but we've all kind of got into a place where we're all fine. Mm -hmm. We're happy. We understand each other. We respect each other, and we just leave it. Yeah. And that's it. And every family's different. Absolutely. But I'm I'm happy with that. Yeah. The biggest message I get from all of this is just remember that your actions have consequences, yeah. and the words that you say to anybody do have impact and i just want to let you know you are a powerful inspiring individual don't give up you gotta be in this world we need your flair in barbados i will keep give it up. doing it because it's like you inspire so many of us to just have fun and live our true authentic lives and i don't think you know how much you impact your straight heterosexual friends but you too last question what is one message you would like to say to anybody who is watching i just wish if people would understand that it's not a choice, it's who we are. Absolutely. And just understand, I'm just like you, but a little more flowers. Just listen. And learn. And learn. Educate yourself. And educate. Right. Yep, I love that. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for coming on here and sharing your story and being bold and vulnerable with me and and opening my eyes up to a lot of my own privilege of just living away and not going oh, yeah. through a lot of the stuff that have, you have had to go through um, and shedding a light on a lot of maybe struggles that you've had in your life. So I just want to say, I want to commend you for your bravery, first of all, for coming on here and sharing your story. And I appreciate you. I'm happy to do it. Right. A year ago, I've not done it. Yeah. I've not done it. I'm happy to know I'm not the only one, and I know I never will be. And for anybody watching, I'm happy to send chat with you. Just message me. If you want to have a conversation, I'm open to it. I'm open to talk to anybody for them to understand. And have a glass of example. <laughs> <laughs> so like, comment, and subscribe. Yay! That's a wrap! <laughs>